you have your outlines here today? Get your outlines. We might not go like that at all. I really don't know. I just know I, I prepare enough. Proper planning uh, prevents poor performance. So whatever performance comes out from the Holy Ghost, that's what we want. Amen? Hallelujah. So, Father God, I thank you right now for the word of God that's quick and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing and divided asunder, soul and spirit, joint and marrow, discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the heart. Let it, Lord, let it shape our lives. Let it mold our lives. We are molded by the word. Your word have we hid in our heart that we would not sin against you. Lord God, fill us up so that we can go out of this place overflowing with the word of God. Lord, we thank you. We thank you for to imparting to us. We thank you for giving to us. We thank you for anointing us. Say this out loud. I am anointed. And I am ready to receive all the word of God. In Jesus' name. And everyone said... Amen and amen. I'm glad. To, how many are glad to be here today? Yeah. I said, how many are glad to be here today? Yeah. How many are just really glad to be here today? Yeah. I'm so glad. I am so glad. It was so good. Mark, just, uh, before services, I really haven't been feeling good. Did you see the anointing that came on Mark up there that destroys yokes? Hallelujah. That's what pushes the devil out. That's what pushes that sickness out. And when you have praise in your heart, God comes in to where you are and pushes the devil out where he might have been. Come on now. That's so good I can't stand it. Hallelujah. Amen. So today I want to minister on calling in your harvest. And I might go in again in that direction because I again will obey the Holy Spirit. So get excited. I want you to know that you're going to hear the word of God today. I just want you to relax. The stuff that you'll begin to hear will begin to change your life. I'm going to stay on this subject for several more weeks. Why? Because the Holy Spirit has informed me that you have to get this. It doesn't, I wish to God that if we can hear one thing one time and get it. But it's not going to happen. Matter of fact, it won't happen. You've got to continually hear the Word of God and keep on hearing it, keep on hearing it, keep on hearing it. Some things might take years to get into our thick souls and down into our heart. So you've got to keep on hearing. That's why I want to keep on hearing this. You might get tired of it and might think it's not good. I'll tell you what, it's going to be good. And it is good because we're going to hear from the Lord. So relax and understand. Listen, it's not what you can do that matters. It's what you will do with the stuff you have that matters. Did you hear me? It's not what you can do. It's what you will do. So you've got to step into what God has. You've got to forcefully go in. Last week we talked about the best kept secret in giving. And that is naming your seed, and that is the purpose. Understand that there's a purpose that God wants to supply all your need. You can actually name that. But I'm going to talk about the best spiritual law that there is in the entire Bible. The best one that works every aspect of God's kingdom. Matter of fact, Jesus was an example of that. And it's called the law of seed time. And harvest, I'm going to show you today how powerful a tool that God has placed in your hand. I'm going to show you from the word of God that will be beyond question then that what God says will be the zenith of what you need to understand about the things of God and how to apply things. I believe that this law was meant for man from the very beginning. Matter of fact, I can prove to you, if we go back to Genesis chapter 1, that it was God's initial intent for man to work and operate this way. And that is, mankind is to have seed that will sustain his life and supply his every need. Every need you have comes from the seed you have. Everything you do comes by way of seed sowing. So we're going to look at and continue in the, in the principle of seed time and harvest, sowing and reaping, and actually we're going to kind of zero in on what is called calling in your harvest or learning how to get your harvest in. You see, we need to understand that. Yeah. Harvest is not automatic. Right. It doesn't march into the barn from the field by its own. Did you all hear me today? Yeah. It doesn't just, well, let, go ahead, Lord, do it. I've done my... No, 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 no. We'll look at this and see how you can actually bring in the harvest, not only in finance, not only in love, not only in souls, but in every aspect, every direction, every place in your life. These are the principles of the kingdom. Yeah. Hallelujah. Now, it's one for you to think to, sing, to sow, and many of you are become what is known as sowers. Not everybody's a sower. 
Matter of fact, if you are not a tither here today, a lot of people think, well, I, need to, I, I don't need to tithe. Well, that's a lie because the Bible talks about it not only in the Old Testament, in the New Testament. And if you don't tithe, I'm going to be very bold. You are a thief and a robber to God. You have been robbing God. Well, I, I just don't believe that. Well, then don't believe me at all. Check it out in Malachi chapter 3, verse 10. Check out what the Word of God says. Tithing is a principle that God has instilled, not Pastor John, not some other church, not your thinking or somebody else's thinking. It is the Word of God. God knows what He's doing. How many believe God knows what He's doing? So He employs this. He puts it into practice. But a sower, then, is not only a tither, a sower is some who habitually looks for ways to give above and beyond his tithe. Yeah. They've given their offering above, they've given their time, they've given their love, they've given every aspect of life, and I pray that that's you. But what we're, talk we're talking about is reaping. We're good sowers. Many of you are good sowers. Yeah. You have learned to sow and give, but you are terrible at reaping. Terrible. Some of your harvests have not even come in. in. Why is it that's still out there? God is expecting for you to have a, resort, a harvest for every seed that you sow. Yeah. Hallelujah. We're not only to, see, we're good sowers, but we need to learn about reaping. We need to learn about reaping. Now, it's not our intention to give the gift. Some of you might think, well, this, this kind of teaching is just about getting. No, it's not. God is a good God. Say amen to that. Amen. Matter of fact, Jim has a testimony, and I didn't think of it, but God has been increasing in his life. This sister over here has shared with me about God is increasing in his life. How many have been seeing increase in their life since we've been teaching on this subject? Hallelujah. So we need to understand that God wants us to know. It's not about we're giving to get, but we do understand that when we give, God has another, alt, another thing as well. He wants to bless the givers. How many want to see the blessing from, the, from what God does? Now, we understand that we're not trying to be selfish. We're not to, trying to be self-motivated or, or uh, inward and only getting. No, 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 no. That's what it's not all about. But what I want you to see is the other aspect that is not taught in the kingdom, that is not taught in the church very much, about how you can reap what you have sown and understand that God has created this mean to supply every one of your needs in your life. Yes, hallelujah. hallelujah. See, because the word says so, we can expect so. I said, because the word says so, we can expect so. Hallelujah. So I want you to know that. Also, a lot of times, we just kind of don't know about this at all. We give, to, we get, give up on our, our harvest. That's a hard thing. We give up on our harvest. I've been doing this a long time. A long time. I not, have not seen everything that I planted yet. But guess what? I'm not going to be weary and well-doing, for I shall reap, but I faint not. Amen. Now, it's not easy sometimes. Matter of fact, I was sitting over there last week, and I was looking at the, tr the church, and it kind of kind of come down in attendance a little bit, and the Lord said to me, he said, what are you doing looking at the dirt? Oh, wow. What are you doing looking at the dirt? Now, what he meant, if you don't understand what that meant, it doesn't mean that you're dirt. It just means when you plant seed and you have put the ground over the, over the seed, all you see is the dirt, and you're wondering, why isn't there anything yet? I just planted it yesterday. Come on. Come on. Hmm. Quick looking at the dirt. Yeah. Keep your eyes on the Lord. Yeah. He will bring the increase. Yes. I said he will bring the increase. So we need to not be weary in well-doing. So today we're going to look at that. So let's get, begin in Genesis with a little late background and uh, biblical foundation. Here we discover that immediately after God created man, God went ahead in verse one, chapter 1. Look at it, verse, chapter 1, verse 29, under, under number 2 there in your, in your outline. Verse 29 says, I have given you every plant with seed on the face of the earth and every tree that has fruit with seed. Listen, this will be your food. In other words, this is the system by which God has implemented for you to have every one of your needs supplied and every kind of provision supplied to your life. I don't know about you, but I want you to look right now and get that seed. 
Put that seed in your hand like this. Come on. I want to show you how powerful this is. Raise it up like this. Hold it up. Hold your seed up. You know what's in your hand? Did you know what's in your hand? The blessing is in your hand. Say that. The blessing is in my hand. Raise it up high and say, the blessing is in my hand. In Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 18, it says, And you shall remember the Lord your God, for he gives you power to get wealth that he may establish his covenant. Let me just tell you something. The wealth he's talking about is not just financial gain. The wealth that God's talking about is every kind of blessing that there is in the Bible. The power to get it is in your hand. The power of blessing is in your hand. I said the power of blessing is in your hand. I said the power of blessing. By the hands of Paul, miracles were done. By the hands of Jesus, miracles were done. By your hand and what's in your hand, that seed in your hand, that giving of yourself, your time, your attention, your finance, Every way to give, the power of blessing is in your... Are you getting what I'm saying here today? The power of God, the blessings of God, right there in a seed. Your words are seed. All these things, all the blessings of God, everything you do. Hallelujah. How many are excited about the things of God here today? Amen. The Apostle Paul continues this narrative and he, can, he speaks about it in Galatians chapter 6, verse 7. Look at it in your outline. Verse 7. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. There's this word I love. Whatsoever, for whatsoever, whatever, whatsoever, whatsoever that is, whatsoever a man sows, that shall he reap. Notice that Paul is basing this upon Genesis chapter 1, that every seed you sow, you can expect a harvest, just like a farmer. The farmer doesn't go out there and say, hey, you know, I just, I just sowed and, and planted a, a several acres of corn. Isn't that nice? But I'm not expecting now anything to come back. That's ridiculous. The farmer sows, and not only that, he expects to receive because God's word says, whatsoever you sow, you shall get back. God wants you to know that this is a principle of divine origin. Matter of fact, the if you don't like where you are, then something has to change. The Bible teaches us also, if you look at that translation on the next one in Philippians, the Philippian translation, it says it this way. A man's harvest in life will depend entirely on what he sows. A man's life. So right now, I want you to look. If you don't like where you are, then you need to till up the ground. What does that mean? Your heart is the ground. You need to change your heart. Be receptive to open to change. If you're not open to change, then you won't change. But if you open up your heart right now, how do you open up your heart? Lord, I'm open to what I have to hear right now. Even if I don't understand it at the moment, I'm opening up my heart to your word that I may hear what it says and then start planting new seeds. Start planting things that are from God into your heart. I'll show you what that means in a minute. If you don't like where you are, then change the seeds that you're sowing. Change the things that you're doing. Seeds have been designed by God to can be either good or they can be bad. They can have good things. A lot of times if you sow negative seeds, you're going to get negative things. You're going to have, if you sow hate, you're going to get hate back. If you sow despair, you're going to get despair back. If you sow sickness and talk it all the time, you're going to get sickness back. But if you sow love, if you sow joy, that is what, what God is to do. That's the positive side of sowing. And some of you need here to, today need to change the way you're thinking. Change the way you're, you're talking. Change the way you're moving. Here's something for you to understand. Your thoughts, your money, your time, everything you do is a seed. It tells us even in the book of Mark that your attention is a seed. If you give attention to something, you'll gain more knowledge. And if you don't pay attention, you'll lose even what you have because you haven't paid attention. So God wants you to know everything works on this principle. It is the most powerful principle that if we implement it in every aspect of our life, we can see increase in every part of our life. Every part. 
More than enough. Overflow. I don't know about you, but I want that for my life. How about you? I want my relationship with my wife, so I sow seed. Yesterday, we went out. We walked down at the Botanical Garden. We had a good time. Had a good cup of coffee. Sowed it into our life. I wanted to spend time with her, and I took her out to a nice meal. Guess what? I'm getting a good return. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Do you all understand the words that are coming out of my mouth? Hallelujah. That'll make you happy, won't it? I said, that'll make you happy. Why don't you look at yourself and say, amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> Galatians chapter 6, verse 7, don't be deceived. Don't, in other words, get this down in your heart. Get this down in your heart. Don't let people talk you out of this. Don't, if you're around people that don't believe like this, just, just keep your mouth shut to around them. Let them go on their way. They'll get it eventually when they see you got what you got going forward. They're going to say, what are you, got? What are you doing? What are you doing, Ryan? Why, are you, why is it that you're able to do that? Why is it that you do? Then you can open your mouth. Hallelujah. Did you know testimonials are a way to inspire the next move of God? Amen. That's why we have people come up and, and testify so that you can get what they got. That's what we had when Rachel came up here. She had a move of God in her life, and it was be able to transfer where a few people that needed that were able to get it. Amen. You overcome by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of your... Hallelujah. Now, we've only heard this kind of message from the negative side. All through our time, we've heard a lot of people going on, and, and they kept on saying, one of these days, you're going to get what you sowed. And so we got it only from that negative side of thinking. Now, that's true. But let me just tell you something. I have done a lot of bad things. How about you? Hello? And I'm wondering, I said, Lord God, please don't hold it against me. And you know I have a good word for you right there. If you've done some bad things that you've sown and been stupid about some things in your life, how many have ever done stupid things in their life, even as Christians? Come on, raise your hand like you know what you're talking about because you actually do. Here's what you do. Lord, forgive me. Lord, forgive me. I speak the word again over that situation in response to it. I'm receiving a good harvest. You can be free from the bad things that you have sown. Just because you've sown bad things, let me just tell you, if you don't do something about it, it will grow. It will overtake you. You better start walking in the forgiveness of God and the love of God and the things of God because if you don't, those things will come up and they'll become strongholds in your heart and you won't be able to deal with the situations and you'll have to get deliverance. And that's why several of you here today have been in despair because you've been sowing despair for a long time and it's time to change your talk so your walk will follow it. I think I'm preaching better than your amen to me. Everybody say amen. amen. Hallelujah. See, in Galatians chapter 6, verse 6 and 7, or 7 and 8, it says, Do not be deceived. Look at your outline. God is not mocked, for whatsoever a man sows, so shall he reap. He that sows to the flesh will of the flesh reap corruption. He that sows to the Spirit will of the Spirit huh, reap eternal life. Now, there's two kinds of sowing. You can sow to the flesh. Every one of you have. This past week, you probably did. But you need to sow to the Spirit. How do we sow to the Spirit? We get the stuff from the Word of God. We start saying it over and over and over. I'll show you what that means. I'll explain it so you actually can know. More explanation brings more manifestation. More explanation brings what? More manifestation and demonstration. So that you know... And you keep on understanding what it says. Keep on understanding what the Word of God says. You start speaking the word of what the Word says over your situation. It's not a one-time deal. Let I me mean, just tell you something. I've been doing this for 40 years, and it builds as you grow. Just as a baby is not mature, you need to mature in the things of God. Are you all here today? It tells us that there's two kinds. So start sowing to the Spirit. Number three here in your outline, this is why it's so important to get the Word of God into your heart. You've got to get it in your heart. I'll tell you right now, without it, without it being in your heart, you've got some issues. 
You can have it in your head and have mental assent and just like that and it won't work. That's where a lot of people yet because they have not worked the stuff from their head down into their heart. My God. You know how to do that? You're going to have to wait a couple minutes until I get to that point. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. This is very important. You've got to get the word to come down into your heart, flow into your life. Listen, when you go through a crisis, you have to be very careful. That's what's coming out of your mouth. I'll tell you right now, emotional responses are strong in the church today. More than response from the word of God. We get emotional. When you get emotional, you're going to say all kinds of stupid stuff. You're going to get mad and angry. They are all emotions. Those emotions, when they speak, have negative consequences. We need to watch what we do because you don't want to go through a hard, when you're going through a hard time, you don't want to speak out the junk that's coming out of your mouth. Junk out will create junk. Here's some examples. I just don't know if I'm going to make it. I've been waiting for such a long time. I don't know if I can do this anymore. Everything is going wrong in my life. Sickness is coming around me. I guess I'll catch it. I believe I'll get it. Well, go ahead. That's what you'll get then. Let me just tell you, God doesn't want you to walk in sickness. God wants you to walk in health. I wish above all things that you prosper and be in health, even as your soul prospers. Oh, Pastor John, that's too strong. Well, don't bother. Don't question me. Ask God about it. It's in the Bible. Just because it's not happening with you yet doesn't mean it's not true. If you're going upon your experiences, then you have negated the word of God as being superior in your life. That's good. You have put your experience above your, the word of God. Well, what needs to change is your experience. How do you change your experience? By changing what's in your heart. How do you change your heart? By the things that you speak into it. And then out of that heart will overflow into something good. I'm going to look at it right now and tell you what I mean. You know, I want to give illustrations so that our minds can comprehend. This is the word of God. Did you know you need to fill your jug with water? Jesus said to the disciples, go get some jugs and fill it with water. <laughs> In the Bible, water represents the word. You have to fill your jug with the word. You hear me? You have to fill your jug. <laughs> Believe me, I would love to have done that. Say amen. I like to fill his jug with some water. Say amen. But you've got to fill your jug with water. When Jesus said that to the disciples, then when they came out, Jesus took the word that was there and turned it into wine. God will take the word that's in you and change it into the wine of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, there'll be a move. You take that water and you start doing it. So how do I know what's in my heart? You take the word that you hear and you start pouring it into your head, into your heart, more and more. Keep on pouring it. Well, I'm getting tired. I don't see anything yet. I don't see anything happening in my life. Nothing's happening. How do I know the words in my heart? How do I know when the word, soon it will be coming, I'm still speaking, I'm still speaking the word, I'm still speaking the word, the moment, moment, there it is. Out of the abundance of your heart, out of the overflow of your heart, out of the overflow, look it, I'm, kill, I'm still putting word in, I'm still putting word in, I'm still putting word in, I said I'm still putting word, I said I'm still Still putting word in. I'm still putting the, my God, I feel good going up here. I'm still speaking the word over my life. I'm still speaking it. God's so good, so wonderful, so pleasing. I feel the Holy Ghost. I feel the anointing of God. The Holy Ghost is about to fall in this place. I'm still pouring it in. I'm still speaking it out. I'm still having a good time speaking the word of the Lord. Hallelujah! Now, you need to praise God a little stronger than that. Lift up your hands and praise the Lord. Still speak that word. 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 Speak the word. Don't speak the problem. Don't speak the, the negativity. 
You, now I'm not denying that it's there. I'm denying the right for it to remain there. Yeah. Hallelujah. I'm not saying you're not going through a problem, but the way to get through your problem is by speaking the answer. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let us profess his name together. Lift up your hands, all ye people. Come on to God with a voice of triumph. I said I'm on fire here today. I said I got the Holy Ghost in me today. I've got the word of God that's going to destroy every yoke that you're under because it's not my yoke, it's not my anointing, it's the anointing of the Holy Ghost. The anointing you receive from him abides in you. And you need not that any man teach you, but as the Holy Ghost teaches you all things, and that anointing is true, and there's no lie, just as it has taught you, remain in him. Remain in him. Woohoo! That's good. There's so much word coming out of me, I don't know. You know why I spend hours at it? Why don't you spend all day with God sometimes? <laughs> it'll change your life. I said it'll change your life. That's what it says. We need to do this daily. Spend time with him daily. Keep on pouring that water in. Spend time in his presence. Keep on confessing it, speaking it, believing it, doing it. In Colossians, if you look on your outline, look at that scripture. Look at that scripture in Colossians chapter where is it? Hallelujah. Chapter 3, verse 16. It says this. Read it with me. Colossians 3, 16. Where is it? Read, read it out loud. Let the word... Read the next word after word. Logos of Christ dwell in you richly. Read the next word. Let God's word dwell in you richly, brother. Amen. Hallelujah. Brother Bill, isn't that true? Let it, I remember Bill, Brother Bill told me that years ago. Let it dwell in you richly. Let it dwell in you abundantly. Let it come out. Let it come out out of the abundance of your heart. Keep on pouring the water in. Keep on pouring the word in. Keep on getting the word in. Get all in the word. Get in the word. Get in the word. Get in the spirit. It'll change your life. You can tell when a person's there. You can tell by what's coming out of their mouth. If you look at Verse 26 of Mark chapter 4, it says this. Look at that in your outline. And he says, So with the kingdom of God is if a man should cast seed into the ground. Jesus is talking about how the kingdom of God works. It's like sowing seed. How does God's kingdom work? It's like sowing seed. It's like the power is in your hand. It's like sowing seed. It's like planting that seed. And he says, so if a man should cast seed into the ground, if you look at verse 14, drop down, go back a little bit to verse 14 in your outline. It says the sower sows the word. He sows the entire word. He knows what the word of God is. Verse 15, and these are they that are by the wayside where the word is sown. And when they have heard, Satan comes immediately and takes the word that was sown in their heart. They didn't get it. He talked to them. They neglect it. Verse 16. And these are there like, like, likewise that have sown on stony ground. When they have heard the word, immediately they receive it with gladness. Verse 17. And having no root in themselves, and so endure for but for a time. Afterward, when, tr when problem comes in a church, when somebody says something that they don't like, when afflictions and hard times come, they arise for the word's sake. Immediately they are offended. That means they fall away. They give up what they got. It says they were not rooted in the word. We need to be rooted in the word. They didn't have no roots in God. We need to be rooted and grounded in the word of God. If, you are, if a tree is not grounded, you can knock it over with your hand. Let us be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. Let us be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. Let us buy like, do you understand what I just said? Yeah. Let us be like a tree planted by the word, yes. by the water of God. That's so good. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Let it be planted. And it goes on to say, and the cares of it is said, these are they that are thrown among thorns. These are a lot of people in the church, especially Americans. Why am I picking on it? Because we need to wake up. Yeah. Hallelujah. I said, we need to wake up or our country will be taken away. Or Christianity will become Islam. I was studying about Turkey. Did you know, I was reading to the, the other day, it said, to the churches that are in Galatia. This is in Upper Macedonia where Paul preached and they were all the seven churches of Revelation. All of them are gone. There's no Christian church anymore. 
99% of them is Islam. Let me just tell you something. I am not opposed to the people of Islam. I am opposed to the doctrine of Islam. Yeah, amen. And amen. And we need to love all people, but not what they believe. Because what they believe is a lie. What they believe is not from God. What they believe is from the devil. Man, that's powerful. If I get caught on this, I'm ready. Hallelujah. Praise God. And then what happened? They got lukewarm. Over time, the Christians in Turkey and that region became lukewarm. They gradually let down their guard. They were not hot. They were not cold. They were lukewarm. They allowed things to come in. And over time, Islam came in and took over. Do you not see what's happening to our country here today? We have people in Congress. Come on now. I'm not trying to be political, but are trying to come in from another background and are more in, in line with the Sharia law than they are the Constitution of the United States. What are we going to do about it? Come on, come on. It's not what you can do, it's what you will do that matters. Do you all believe the words that I'm saying here today? I'm not here to offend you, but you give me scripture for what you believe then. And if you can't, then you better change. That's what means to be changing us. Hallelujah. We need to have a lifestyle change. Again, one of the most important things about sowing and reaping, number four, in the kingdom is speaking the word out of your mouth. It starts with your mouth. Everything starts with your mouth. You can, I can spend five minutes with somebody and can tell where they are spiritually. Well, that's very arrogant of you, Pastor, to say that. No, it's not. When you go to your car, you can tell how much oil is in the, t in the, in the engine, can't you? All you need to do is check the dipstick. This is your dipstick. <laughs> and some of you have bad, you are in need of an oil change. You need some Holy Ghost. I said you need some Holy Ghost. You need some Holy Ghost. All of us need some Holy Ghost. We need Holy Ghost. We need Holy Ghost. We need the Holy Ghost. I said we need the Holy Ghost. We need the Holy Ghost. We need the Holy Ghost. I said we need the Holy Spirit. We need an oil change. Come on, I've been running on that for over 4,000 miles, and I need an oil change here today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You need to change and see what's in your dipstick. Hallelujah. And that engine by speaking the things that are coming out of your mouth. What are the words that are coming out of your mouth? Are they from God? Are they from you? Or are they from the devil? If they're from you or the devil, you will be destroyed. But if the things are of God, you shall be an overcomer and overcome every situation by the word of God. My God, that's good. This place is going to be filled. 400 people are coming. I said 400 people. We're going to have two services soon. Oh, Pastor John, you're looking at, no, I'm not. Listen, I planted seed. You might look around and say, look, all I see is dirt. I'm not looking at the dirt. I'm looking at the increaser called God. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. It starts with your heart. It starts with your heart by speaking it. The word of God is nigh thee, Bill. In thy heart, first in thy mouth, and then in your heart. Here's how it does it. First it comes out of your mouth. After a while, you keep on speaking it, it gets and drops down from here to here. Once it gets there, it comes back and it comes out. First the mouth, then the heart, then the mouth. Get that? First the mouth, then the heart, then the mouth. Say it. First the mouth, then the heart, then the mouth. Say it again. First the mouth, then the heart. Keep on speaking it. Keep on speaking it. Keep on speaking it. Keep on speaking while I disconfess. Listen, your confession has brought you possessions of what you have. You got saved by confessing Christ. And you get, and as you have received him, so walk in him. The same way you receive him. Hallelujah. There was a farmer, and I'm closing. Can you say amen? That's not good. Hallelujah. There was a farmer who for years sowed and reaped cotton in his field. This farmer had a neighbor. 
who was a good friend of him, and they would talk a lot and have dinner on many occasions. Then one year, the neighbor noticed that the fields were not filled with cotton. But something else, something else was out there. The neighbor was wondering, what's in the field? There was no cotton out there. So he went to his farmer friend, Jim. Jim the farmer. Come on now. He went to Jim. He said, Jim, where's the cotton this year? And Jim said, I didn't want any. The neighbor kind of continued because he said, well, why didn't you plant cotton? The farmer said, I didn't want any. The neighbor asked him, he says, what kind of seed, is, what kind of thing is out there now? He said, soybeans. And the neighbor said, why do you have soybeans? He says, because I didn't want cotton, so I plant soybeans. Are you getting what I'm about to say? Yeah. Some of you have been speaking junk. <laughs> it's easy. It's easy. Go for a walk, okay? Go shout somewhere and get it out of you and start talking the word of God. Let me just tell you right now, if you don't want sickness, don't talk sickness. Just because it tries to come to your house, don't accept it. Amen. Hallelujah. Jesus talked to the wind. Jesus talked to the trees. Jesus talked to inanimate objects. If Jesus was that ridiculous, so can you. Don't talk to sickness. Don't talk to disease. Don't talk to sadness. Don't talk to gloom and doom. Don't talk to despair. Don't talk to poverty. Don't talk to lack. Don't talk to want. And stop, start planting good seed. Start planting the right things. Start, this is not John chapter 4 of Mark. This is Jesus chapter 4 of Mark. And God's word wants you to know, as you start to sow, as long as the earth remains, seed, time, and harvest shall remain. So how many know the earth is still here? When are you going to do about it? It's not what you can do, it's what you will do.